This is Steve Wilson and the XCrafts eJets video tutorial series. In this video, we're going to cover manual waypoint entry using the Tecton FMS. So here, of course, we're starting at the radio page as usual, and we'll go to the index. The whole point of this exercise is to add route waypoints. One of the first things you'll want to do before you do your waypoints is you'll want to go ahead, go into performance, and performance page two, and you'll want to enter your cruise airspeed. Uh, generally speaking, I'm just going to go ahead and use 270 knots for the sorts of altitudes that I'm planning on flying. And we enter that up top here, and it's letting us know that we're missing the departure airport. That's okay at this point of the game. We're just using this as a demonstration exercise. Let's go back to the index, and now we're going to go into our waypoint editor. Add route waypoint. Uh, there are basically uh, five different types of waypoints on the second row of the FMS. You can add airports, VORs, NDBs, fixes, or latitude and longitude, otherwise known as GPS. We'll enter a, a GPS waypoint at the very end of this uh, video just for demonstration purposes, but this is fairly abnormal uh, in uh, most cases. Anyway, Let's add a fix. First thing we'll do is choose our fix, and I have chosen parks. It's simply because I happen to know that that's a good waypoint locally. And there we go. And the nav ID has been entered. Now what I'm going to do, just for grins, is I'm going to enter the waypoint altitude using direct keyboard entry. And that is inserted here. Good to go. If I try to back out here, unsaved entries, ah, gee whiz, my text is yellow basically means this information has not been saved. So let's go ahead and save that. Now let's go back to the index. Oh, still can't do that. If I went ahead and overrode by trying again, I'd lose this data and basically lose the data that I entered because you have to have two waypoints to define a route. A route is from point A to point B. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? All right, let's enter another fix. And uh, there we go. And that's been taken. I've got new data to save. The text is yellow. Notice that my altitude has persisted from the first waypoint. This is a convenience because, of course, we don't want to be entering altitudes every single waypoint. A little convenience factor there. Okay, let's save Almon and let's see what we got. We go back to the index and we look at our route editor. So here we have two fixes, Parks and Almon, in order, 270 knots, uh, that's the airspeed that we selected in performance, and of course the two altitudes that we inserted uh, starting with Parks and persisting into Almon. Next thing I want to show you is I want to show you how to add waypoints using airways. So we go back into the waypoint editor. Uh, I just happen to know that Almon happens to lie on an airway. As long as the way last waypoint that's entered in the route list happens to be on an airway, you can enter where airways from here. So that said, let's go into airways and see what we can get. Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of selections I can go to. Uh, I'm, using, I'm still in direct keyboard entry, so let's go ahead and go down and select J92. Now, one thing I'll point out here is you've got two entries, two airway entries. Uh, basically, this means uh, uh, you've got an airway in one direction and an airway in the other direction. Uh, airways, of course, are bidirectional, generally speaking. Uh, in this particular case, we want to go uh, to... PICA or beyond, uh, what you see here in the third column is the next waypoint in the route. So this will give you an idea, looking at your airways charts, of which uh, waypoint that you want to select in terms of picking your direction. Of course, you can always go back and forth and uh, and and, uh, and check because if we go into, for example, we go to go to Tucson and we select that enter key, uh, we've got a whole bunch we can choose here. But say, for example, we don't choose that, we can go back to Airways, and we can see what's in the direction of Pica. And 
I can also cr uh, press the uh, center button on the um, uh, selector knob. And there's a whole bunch of other uh, air, air, uh, airway waypoints that we can go to. So let's go ahead and go to PXR, which is the Phoenix uh, VOR, I believe. And the next thing we do, of course, once we've selected this row, is we press Enter or the center of the button. Now let's see what we have. Now we have, instead of two waypoints, we have five. This is a new waypoint. It's six, so we know that we have at least five waypoints. Let's go back and check that. Pardon my fumble finger there. There we go. Five waypoints. So let's continue this exercise. Go back into Add Route Waypoints. Go into Airways. And let's see what airway do we want to pick now. Let's go ahead just for fun and uh, pick J19. Let's go ahead and J19 appears to be one direction for us. That's largely likely because uh, it's poss quite possible that uh, the PXR waypoint is an endpoint on that particular airway. So let's go ahead and go for the gusto here. Let's go to the second page and let's get off at Coop. Okay, now we've got 20 waypoints and uh, they're all at 15,000 feet because waypoint altitudes do persist. And we go into route edit and son of a gun, now we've got two pages of waypoints. We've accomplished so much in so little time. And that pretty much is entering waypoints uh, manually as well as entering uh, airways. One last thing I'll show you is entering a latitude and longitude uh, waypoint. Uh, of course, we use the lat long button. We now get the GPS indication. We're still at 15,000 feet. And now I'm go, just going to go ahead and enter some uh, latitude and longitude uh, values. Let's see. Let's, I'm going to use, uh, what should I use here? Okay, we use a latitude of minus 38. That is entered, and now and that goes into the longitude field. Simple, simple, and we save that. Okay, now let's see what we got uh, in that particular waypoint. And go to page two, and here we are. GPS, latitude, and longitude. And if we look at that, we can select that, and we can actually bring that up in an editor, and we can make changes to this now. Uh, you may recall we did this uh, uh, earlier when we were editing and updating waypoints. I forget which video that was, sorry. But basically, here you can go ahead and you can change the altitude, for example. And for whatever reason, and we want to save that, update the waypoint, and now you show... 16,000 feet uh, for that particular waypoint. And that pretty much covers manual waypoint entry using the Tecton FMS. Hope this entertained. Hope you got something out of it. Thanks for dropping by. And of course, as always, we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a great day.